Well, hello! Welcome to Drawing with Fire. I am Valerie, your neighborhood pi pyography artist, and this is your home of burning and learning. And I'm joined with Hubby. Okay. And we are finishing up the lives for the dragon. May is already almost over. Can you believe it? I can't. Let's make sure the mic is going. Yes. Hey, Spence, Teresa, Amy. So we are going to work on this lighter mountain. Yesterday we started the fog and this morning I added some more because I really needed to get it in. But I was too tired last night. So all this is going to go darker. And this is going to be darker. But we're going to focus on this right now. Um, and I think we'll probably pop up here before the live ends in order to get this really out of focus foggy look so right here and i've got all these references all around me <laughs> i'm on two with the 18s and that seems still a little high i'm going to bump it down to one and a half um, really need to turn my heat down on this wood and then build it up I did, I have been saying that I haven't been using the poplar, or I don't want to use this poplar anymore because of how it's dirtying my tips. This is in regards to this particular poplar. This is a plywood poplar, and I really do still want to get an actual solid piece of poplar and try that because I have a feeling it's going to burn much better. Alrighty, so I don't have a whole lot of lines in here. I've already kind of lightened them up by erasing. But let's do a little bit more. And remember, all of this is going to have to be darker. Um, the tree line needs to go darker with a few more shadows added in. All of this has got to go darker. Let's see here. So we're going to get started right here. We have a dark er, And I'm just tapping and dragging it in very quickly because I don't want it too dark. Now remember, this is going to look dark because there's no burning around it. But then once I darken up this area here, it's going to look much lighter. So we got to keep that in mind. It is going to change tonal value and look different based on what we put around it. So we'll just keep that in mind. And how is everybody doing? I can't believe we're already almost done with this. I know. And I am going to... Like I said last night, I am going to record finishing this up so that I could get a speed video with um, from start to beginning out. But I do want to have a finished piece included in that. Alrighty. Just blocking in. Some of these areas may go darker. Just blocking in. That way it gives me an idea of what's going on. And it also make the uh, dragon head look darker because of this light around it. Remember that when things are further away, they appear lighter and less detailed. So we don't want any of this detail in. I should have finished this rock so that we could really tell the difference. That's okay. Oh, it looks pretty good to me. I'm just barely tapping the wood. Yeah, the, the fog is in the trees was really convincing. Well, there's still areas that need to go darker. Um, but I was fine where it's at to get started for today. For today's live. So. It's quiet. Sheila loved watching you do the lower trees. Hey, Sheila. Smith says I haven't even started. The usual. Um, Teresa said your pine trees are awesome. I love this piece. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So what I'm seeing here, and see, even with the, the snow, it's not white. It has a bunch of tonal value to it. And then when we darken around in the darker areas, the snow will look lighter. It's, it's funny. We have a, a white dog in it. I... One of my dogs used to be all white. He was a husky Malamute mix. And during the summertime, he looked blazing white. And everybody would always say, oh, look how white your dog is. And then in the wintertime, <laughs> in the snow, 
he just looked like dirty yellow. Yep. And Zena is the same way. She's the same way. Except for she actually does look dirty right now because she's laying in the yard. She's sunbathing. Dirty. She's yeah. All right, well, let's quickly just get a darker line along here so that I can make sure that I stay separate. So we're going to drag down. I'm still on the same heat, but because I'm using the full tip and going a little slower, it may not look a little slower, but it is a little slower. That is what's going to give me the dark. A lot of pin control. So this tonal value, is burning wise, is looking the same as this one. So that means we need to darken this front one just a tad. Why is Spence packing up everything he owns? Because he's moving, I told you. Oh, that's right. He's moving. So let's get this in here. He's concerned. No, he's just moving. All right, got some darks in there. That's what I wanted. That's what I wanted. See, this is going to need to go much darker as well. Right here, I'm just using the tip and kind of the side of the pen. I probably should zoom in so you can see better. We we shall ride. All righty. And it kind of gets the camera out of my face. So this is more silhouette, but it's not a dark silhouette. And that's definitely something to pay attention to. Not a dark silhouette. Or a black silhouette, I should say. It is darker. And see, along here, we can see kind of treetops sticking out. So just using the tip and going back and forth to follow the direction of how the trees are coming down the mountain without doing any real t detail really helps give some depth it still gives the the fogginess or the lack of detail without putting in that detail and there are some areas that are darker than others on this hill on this mountain right now i'm just trying to darken this line a little bit so that it pushes that back and you guys can see it being pushed back and we've got a ridge here it is a little darker it looks like there's some trees just kind of <coughs> excuse me poking their way out and then we have fog up here now looking at my uh, sepia reference we do have oops I'm a little dark it's okay i just darken this up and then you won't notice it. All right. So in this fog right here, we do have some, but I'm actually going to turn down all the way to one. And this poplar will take it. See, even on low heat, it's still dirtying up the pen. Frustrating. I'm spoiled. I couldn't imagine working on this particular wood without a polish tip. You see right there you can see the coloration difference. That is carbon. It would drag really badly. It would drag very badly. So if you're not using a fixed tip pen, wouldn't even try it on this wood. Or not a fixed tip pen, a polish tip. Alright. Let's see if it's still dirty. So Carmen. Hey Carmen. I believe I'm pronouncing this correctly. Um Pelletier. Um it always confuses me, but in all the hockey that I've watched, that anybody who has that particular ah. last part of that name is pronounced that way. So if I'm mispronouncing your name, Carmen, I apologize. Um, now, Pat she says that she's here and enjoying the burn. Awesome. Thank you for being here. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you the canning wax. But I have to cool off my tip first in order to wipe it on my strop first. The canning wax is only for tips that a traditional strop has a harder time cleaning or if you're in a hurry. But I don't use it every time to clean the tips. 
Now, if I don't have a problem cleaning the tip on the strop, then I won't use it. And some of it is coming off, so I may not use it at all. Only when I've wiped on the strop and I can't get all of the carbon off, because sometimes that happens, depending on the wood. We used to put some. Yep. Um, will I turn my heat up to 10? Let it glow real quick. Let me grab my candy wax. And this will be very quick. So I'm on 10. I know that the carbon is right at the tip. So I'm just going to quickly kind of drag it across. Let it burn off the wax. And again, this is only when I can't get carbon off with my strop. Let it burn off the wax for a minute. And then turn it off. Let it cool down, and then I'm going to turn around and use my strop again. And this time the carbon will come off. While we're waiting, I will go ahead. Don't you have a video on I do, cleaning but with it? Cause Pat I... was like, I wish you wouldn't have told people that because some people are, are not using it the same way. Ah. Um, so that's paraffin wax or canning wax. You can get it at the grocery store, wherever the canning stuff is. I'm going to switch over to the medium. Because Spence was wondering how that works with the wax, but you have a video. Yeah, the wax pulls the carbon. And you're doing it very quickly, so the temperature change between the two is what allows the, car the wax to grab the carbon. Science. Science. Don't ask me any reason, other, any other thing. All right, so I switched over, and I'm still I'm at one and a half because remember. Each tip burns differently, or heats differently, so we need to make sure that we have a tester board to um, check that. And sorry about the saws in the background, somebody is taking down a tree. Alright, across the street. So let's get our, light, our darker fog clouds in. And then we've got lighter snow underneath, so this is going to have to go a little darker. And I'm just making very quick circles with just the tip of this pen. And trying to follow the direction of the fog. I do see that there is some darks in here. I can go back and put those in later, so I'm not going to worry about if I've lost them because I burned over the area. Now we did wipe the board last night to see how the wood is going to kind of react to the varnish. And it appears, the one good thing about this wood is it seems to keep the lights. The wood doesn't quite darken as much. So there's a bit of less. And that's what, it's an eighth inch poplar from where? Um, trying to think of the name of the way. Wood, Woodcrafts? Woodcrafts. Uh, or Humul? Okay, Carmen was wondering. I don't recommend it, especially if you're new to burning and you don't have highly polished tips, you're going to get uh, frustrated very quickly. And I don't want people to give up on burning. Um, that's why I pulled the link from the description, because I can see those new to burning, getting the wood, and thinking they did, they're doing something wrong when they're not. So I don't recommend it, especially if you're new. If you've already got it, use it. It'll be great practice. But if you don't have it, there's other words that are better to learn on. Yeah. All right. So we're getting some of these clouds in. Would you um? Would you recommend? I'm just asking. The chat's not asking, but mm -hmm. I'm I'm asking. So you're burning on an eighth inch, and like normally the stuff that you have is much thicker than that. Mm -hmm. What's your preference? I go between the two. The what, the eighth inch wood is easier for me to um, double mat in a frame. Okay. Versus, 
um, a quarter inch piece of wood that takes one mat maybe. You well, kind of push it, it depends on the depth of the frame, it kind of pushes it out actually. Like what we had problems with yes. the last framing? Yep. So if you're going to mat, then probably the thinner the better, mm -hmm. huh? Yeah, and that makes sense because then yep. you won't have to use uh, frame extenders on the back to yep. mount your piece. In fact, I stick the glass in the back when I'm exhibiting my wood burnings. I stick the glass in the back just as an added, added thickness. And then if I have to, if I bring it home, I put the glass back in front as protection until it's purchased. Well, and you do that for another reason too, because when you have glass in front of it, people who haven't seen pyrography before, they might think that it's just like pen and ink or uh, something like that. And then there's the glare too. But but with it, without glass in front of it, you can see it better, and then you can see what it is better. Like you can see the grain clearly. No. I hate when it squeaks. It shouldn't be squeaking now. So time. Carmen has is totally new. Mm -hmm. So far has been using old boards and cut poplar with the bark still on. See, and I'm guessing that poplar is totally fine to burn on. It's just this particular brand of plywood. Um the company is not gonna be happy with me saying this. It feels very cheap. Do you think it's an artifact of that piece or that no, match? No, I think it's this type of plywood. Oh, okay. Sometimes it, it happens. Some wood feels cheap when you burn on it. So yeah. what, whatever you're burning on, and you have, a, you have a, uh, I think, at least one great video about prepping your wood for... I'm doing a... I don't have a good Oh, one. okay. So prep just is important the, too. Just put the... Just put that stress on me. All right, so we can see here we got I a bit of the mountain. That you have that. <coughs> no, not yet. I want to make a very detailed right. one. You want to feel? You want to feel like you've accomplished? <laughs> I haven't done. I've only done what six videos on my channel. Three of them are Warframe related. <laughs> I thought that's the purpose of your channel. Well, eventually it'll be like a. Um, family history for my kids and maybe a little bit of painting but I haven't gotten around to it yet all right so right here we do have the mountain but it's very blurry so I'm trying very hard in fact it might be better to switch over pens all together because I don't like how this one Ooh, let's go up we're up here guys let's go up here you didn't tell me mm -hmm. I was busy multitasking all right here so right here I the way I laid out the darks is the in the pattern is the darks are outlined and the uh, snow is not yeah I'm not liking how this pins burning right now it's not the pins fault so I don't want any I'm gonna actually probably have to take some sandpaper to once I burn to um, get rid of some of this and that's another thing I don't like how the graphite transferred even though I used um, a very light hand it still came out really dark and this um, yeah I hate the squeaking let's go back over to this one I wipe it yet not yet Wait, wait, wait. Spence says time goes way faster than you think. It does. I'm not sure what that's in reference to, Spence. Is it the live? Is it already? No. Well, we're, we're already 20 minutes in. 20 minutes in, yeah. But... Have I said anything useful yet? <laughs> well, a bunch. Hmm. Have I said anything useful? Sometimes you I You always say things that are useful. Sometimes I don't feel like it. All it's right. It's a deluge of information. It is. And I'm trying to do multiple things. Me too. Drink coffee and read. <laughs> That's it here. Check Instagram. Uh, I've only checked Instagram once. <laughs> and the fact that he's proud of himself that it's only been once. That's right. Did I switch tips? Pins? Uh... I do hate when my cords get. I mean, I'm back in the studio as well. Yeah, my studio. <laughs> what? My studio. 
I was in the studio yesterday. That's true. I haven't been in the studio working in like over a week, so. All right, let's get some of this in down here. Well, except for yesterday. And hopefully today I'll be able to do some more. Now remember when angles come down, there's going to be, let's see. Here. What are you talking about? Angles on the mountain. We need to follow them down oh, okay. the mountain. So that's why I'm trying to angle it better. So there's a tooth right there. Right here, we have some of the slope. Oh. And I guess this needs to get darker. The, yes, the weaving the videos for your family. So what I want to do, Spence, is uh, for my kids' sake. Um, and grandkids. And grandkids and any, any, as long as the internet is around, I suppose, and that there are people who, who, are, who care, who are in my genetic line, who care, you know, that um, I, I want to like relay some of the old stories that I heard growing up, and some of the things that I, happened to me while, you know, while I was growing up and stuff, and so that way, it's not lost because it occurred to me that more than ever before in history, we have better mechanisms now for talking about family history and things like that. It used to be just like eight millimeter videos and stuff, you know, home or, you know, camcorders and stuff, what you could catch at events, you know, but now, you know, you can actually record a lot. So that's my intent. And yeah, time passes faster than you think. I like, I can't believe that we've been here. Um, well, I can't believe I've been retired for eight years. Eight years. Yeah, it'll be eight years in December. Wow, that's crazy. Uh, I'm just kind of getting that's crazy some, talk. It is. Just trying to get some of the mountain peaks in. Oh, coffee's gone. <laughs> and then I can go back because these are just the darker areas. Let's see here. We go. These are just the darker areas of the light. See, we got some peaks in here in the clouds. So we get some of those in here. And then the clouds get darker up in here. But all this is showing me that I definitely need to darken up my dragon. Especially the head where I kept it light. See, we got fog here. Let's just get some fog in here. Oh, girl, sir. Hey, girl. So I'm just going slow. Or I actually, sorry. I'm just going very quickly on a low speed. Let's see, this still needs to go darker, which right here in my photo is darker on the dragon. So I'll have to go back and forth, and that's why I don't put everything in and say, oh, I'm done with this section, because as I go, other areas are going to have to be altered. And this definitely shows it. Get some snow in here. See, we have a darker area here, even though it's white. Right now, I'm looking at my sepia photo, which I don't have popped up. Let me switch them over. It's this one. There we go. There we go. So, right here is where I'm trying to get that darker. That way, this looks lighter. It's all about using my tones to help support other areas of the burning to get that realistic look as close as possible. Now I'm still not happy with huh, most of my burnings. I'm definitely still trying to get realism down. I wondered about that girl. Hmm. She said she can't type, needs more coffee. Oh, <laughs> let's see here. So we got a darker ridge in here. We just kind of lay it in. I think as an artist, though, like... I, I think as an artist, like, as you improve, like, you're always going to feel that way about your art. Like, even, like, I'm happy with my work, like, right when I get it done, you know? And then, like, 
over time I get less and less pleased with it, <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. because I see things that I could do better. Let's so. see here. So we got lighter mist fog clouds that go into darker. So we gotta leave some room. Ah, gotta watch where my pen is. That's all right. And this still needs to go darker. So it's a game of going back and forth. And this is where patience really kicks in. Because sometimes you're like, I don't want to do this anymore. But if you spend that extra hour on that one area that you didn't want to, you will see a big difference by the time you're done. Just from that extra small amount of time. That's true. It's something I've had to learn. It's actually something that you, you have reinforced with me. It's one of the positive influences you've had on me. <laughs> There's only only one or two? Just a few. Just a few, that's yeah. it. Yeah, because I, I used to rush through my art a lot more, and now I don't. So. Right. I try not to. Just blocking in some of this may go a little darker, but I want to be able to get rid of some graphite as much as I can. Let's see here. Remember, ridges away from this, wherever the light source is, are going to be darker. I see that's blurry, but I can't really put the blurry in because of the graphite. I got to get rid of it. I think that's an important part of art, no matter what medium you're using, is that you can copy something and um, you, you know, can be convincing with that copy. But understanding like how light and shadow interact with physical objects in the 3D world is really important. And the more knowledge that you have of that, the more that you can add, you know, because sometimes you don't necessarily have all the visual information or you might need to change something. And if you, <coughs> if you have that knowledge and ability, then you can make your work more convincing. Like understanding atmospheric perspective in this case is really important. Yeah, the fog is really breaking up the line and not allowing some <coughs> areas to be um, as light as others. And so we got to take that into consideration. Oops, that was dark. So Sorry. Carmen wants to know, I have an answer for this too, but I'm curious to see what yours is. Oh boy. Um, Carmen wants to know, how difficult would you say mountains are to do? Um, difficult? Not really if you're paying attention to directions. Meaning the directions of where your different peaks are. What is your answer? Are you, do you mean like how the light hits them and like how the shadow falls and mm -hmm. and then also like the sharpness of it too like because as things get further away you have that atmospheric mm -hmm. perspective it's so like a little fuzzy because there's more in the way especially in this piece because there's a lot of fog and precipitation you know and so you see that in those far peaks that on the references that um, it's hazier as it goes away mm -hmm. and that to us that in a 2D world gives us the information that we need to see that it's three-dimensional because we know in life that that's the way it works and your brain knows that and so it becomes more convincing. Um, oh, Josh is here. Hey, Joshua. Um, I need to spend some time that with That dude him. is getting big. I know. I saw him the other day. I can't believe how, I know. I can't believe how tall he is. Turning he's 16 in a couple weeks. Basically a grown-up. No. If he was the 1800s, he'd, he'd, be, he'd be growing up. He'd be out on his own. He'd be on his third wife by now. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> Don't listen to Uncle Jason. You're not ready. Um, yeah, so yeah. my answer for mountains is, well, it depends on what kind of mountain that you're doing, but mountains really aren't more or less difficult than mm -hmm. anything else. It's just a matter of understanding Their shapes. the shapes that are there and, and, mm -hmm. and but understanding the structure of things. And that but that goes for all things. And I think that 
when you're talking about distant mountains, that they can potentially be easier because then you're not having to worry so much about so much detail. Um, but that's the case with everything. So yeah. I think that when people ask, like, well, you know, what's more difficult, you know, a mountain or a face or, you know, it's really all about the same. It's kind of a, it's kind of a, um, a trick of the mind. It's like you, you tend to think that things are more complicated. And they really aren't because everything, you're just drawing shapes in relation to each other. The more accurate you are at drawing those shapes in relation to each other. In the light hitting it. In, 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 in the more knowledge that you have, then, you know, the easier it is to, to do that. So but it's about the same. But I will say this. If you have a love of doing a particular subject over another one, mm -hmm. it's going to be easier to do that. Oh, so absolutely. if you don't like doing mountains, then they're probably not going to be intuitively easy. But if you love doing mountains, you're going to find that you're able to do them probably a little bit quicker than other things. And I guess the goal as an artist is to try and find that love for everything that you do. But we all have our favorite subjects. And you'll know those your favorite subjects because those pieces are the ones are gonna, you do the most. <laughs> come, well, the ones you do the most and they're going to be the ones that come out best. So, And in fact, next week we start the Grand Canyon. Yeah. Cliffs and mountains. Well, me, not so much mountains, but cliffs. Me personally, I don't... The mountains are okay. I, I enjoy them somewhat, but um, it's not my favorite subject. You know, this is the first time I've ever burned distant mountains, but I don't tend to do landscapes. This is the first. But you could be spending years doing animals. The same theories and techniques and everything they apply on other subjects. Mm -hmm. So that's why I recommend trying different ones and that's why I'm also trying different ones because it just adds to your library of knowledge. You know that's really true what you just said because... Of course because I said it. <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> so one of the things that um, if you, if you perceive that you have a difficulty drawing something, it, it's really in your head. Mm -hmm. That's where it takes place anyway. But, that's true. But uh, so nothing in, is inherently more difficult to draw than anything else, really, honestly. But a lot of artists will avoid those things that they don't like drawing because, uh, or that they perceive that they have trouble with because, you know, the outcome or whatever. And I think it's really important that as an artist that you try and do things that you're not comfortable with yep. or that you think you you know maybe aren't as good at so that you can get beyond that let's see here i am actually going to try wiping the board and see if that gets me any graphite off because if not i'm gonna have to pull out my piece of um and burl says in, in regards to difficulty of the mountains, not as difficult as hair. And Spence says, Burrow, is it because you just did hair? Yep. <laughs> and she says, that could be true, Spence. Yeah. Um, I'm just getting my paper towel damp. I'm going to let it soak through. So Carmen has taken some amazing pictures of the mountain at, I think it's Mount. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right, Malign. It's it could be Maligny, but I think it's probably Malign, Malign Lake. And uh, Jasper Alberta, and mm -hmm. she wants to give them a try. Definitely Absolutely, do them. Do it. Do it. Yeah, because Cause even if it sucks the first time, the second time gets better. And you just and that didn't really she suck. She just posted a comment. It's a, it's a lol i can't draw a stick man if you're like pinning on it sure you can absolutely false carmen mm -hmm. you can draw anything it just is a matter of shapes um turn things upside down if your brain gets confused if you you know what i'm gonna i'm gonna plug a book again i'm gonna do it you know which book i'm gonna plug yeah is it up there is it in your studio um there's a book called drawing on the right Greg side got of the it. brain mm -hmm. 
Oops. And uh, the website. that changed my world when, because uh, I always drawn since I was little. But you know, I couldn't draw hands and I couldn't draw um, faces very good. And I pretty much drew um, Star Wars stuff, like pictures of the Death Star and Darth Vader. You know, and that's pretty much what I did. And um, well, you were a kid. Well, I know, but I wanted to draw more, but I didn't, I wasn't any good at it. And but uh, taking that book as a course, like it's a it, because it is a course. Um, that changed my perception of art for my whole life and I really think that if you want to improve your drawing skills that it couldn't hurt because it will teach you to see in a different way and that's really what it's about I mean there's a hand-eye coordination and connection but it art is about seeing the world around you more than anything else so yeah drawing on the right side of the brain by Betty Edwards. I think I have it on my Amazon page. If not, I'll... I'll look and see if it's I will. Here. Maybe in your studio. I'll go look in my studio. I think okay, it's, it's right. We're, no, no, it's fine. Okay. We're, we're almost done. <laughs> Come back. Come back. I will... Po <coughs> I will post it. Okay. <clears throat> Excuse me. Hmm. Uh, to, oh, all right. Oh, yeah, we're hey, Moritz. Hey, Moritz. We're yeah. actually <laughs> we're almost done. That's okay. Do we have any further questions? I'm letting the wood dry. This yeah. does need to go darker and it goes lighter as we go up. We will you'll do the same thing over here. Make sure it's blurry. You don't want outlines, you don't want any defining lines because that is what's going to detail it out and make it less blurry and we want blurry and I may have to actually take some paper <laughs> this pet says I got that book and packed it <laughs> yeah him and Greg bought it that's right after the first I might time actually go it. through it one day and just like retake it you know it's full of really good exercises yeah, I'm constantly drawing when I'm burning so Yep. So I will finish this off camera, but I will record it so that I can put up the speed burning of it. I'm going to probably do two. One is going to be a, a speed, not so fast, but speed burning of the whole project and with links to each of these lives if you need more detail on it. And then I'm going to do a really fast speed burning with just music from beginning to end for those people who like those. Everybody learns differently, so hopefully that will help. And see, the board looks pretty straight right now, and it definitely looks better on camera than it does in person. So more, it says no questions. Just the dragon looks awesome. Love the color Thank of the you. forest. Carmen says burning is copying as much information as possible, and then yep, same as rest. drawing. Same as drawing. It's same as drawing. Um, if you get stuck on watching burning videos or you run out, even though I have. I think we're almost at 225 now. Um, drawing videos. Drawing videos will help you a bunch on shading. And this way you can do it on a quick piece of paper and, and practice an area real quick. But then you have to switch your brain. So it really depends on how, how your brain works. We all work differently. Hey, Andrea. You're not late. You, no. arri you arrived exactly when, when you did too. Oh, okay, Gandalf. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and, so, yeah. All this has got to go darker. <laughs> what? Yeah, minus the trees down here need to come down and go a little darker. Um, but once I put this closer mountain in, this will make more sense. And once I darken this a little bit, these will make more sense. And then we got some clouds. Just um. Just just scan it into the computer and then just darken the whole thing and you should be good to go. No, I'm going to finish <laughs> this one because I'm no? asking everybody else to finish okay. it. I'm going to finish it. Yes. Um, Don't forget. Um, oh, this has been happening. I do not have the email address drawing with fire at Google at gmail.com. That is not mine. So if you've been sending your art submissions for the gallery show to that email address, I will not get it at all. It needs to go to submit drawing with fire at gmail.com. 
and all the information's in the group and time is a ticket. May 31st is going to come quickly and I need to get some pieces done for the show as well. So, I, you guys aren't the only one feeling it. Carmen, it's not a video, it's a book. It's a book. It's a book. You can buy it on Amazon. It's actually an older, uh, it's an older book. Uh, yeah. Um, it's it's old, it, yeah, because I was a kid when I mm -hmm. took it, so you know. And you're um, old. You know, yeah. Thanks. Yeah, you're welcome. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you're welcome. Jerk. So next week anyway. we, we start the Grand Canyon. I am doing the Grand my Grand Canyon on a piece of birch that is a circle. It's a 12 inch diameter circle because that's a really detailed photo. I will probably also release my pattern for that, but I will make it rectangle for you guys. And then you can resize it however you need to. But I am doing the circle that's back there. But no, maybe it's over there. It's over it's there. No, it's somewhere in my studio. <laughs> uh, don't forget to like and comment and share, please. Oh, hold on. Oh. Moritz, I'm probably not going to be on. I'm like starving and I need to get lunch. So, yeah. But. But there is definitely one thing I always need to remember to what tell you. What is that? You. you are awesome. I know that. You can do this. Well, maybe. <laughs> You're a fire artist. Doubtful. You're that. Happy burning, guys. Bye. See you next week. Let's see. Let's turn that off. Let's turn that off.